Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to walk you through the build process for my new bed frame. I'm going to put a narration over this video. I didn't do much talking when recording uh, so we're going we're gonna to clip it up a little bit, speed up, slow down, uh, but I want to walk you through the process and uh, for starters this is what it ends up looking like and it, it turned out really well. I really like it. There's a, a few little things that I would probably change. Um, if, if I were to do this again, and I will include those things in there as well. So right out of the bat here, we're going to go ahead and speed this video up. What I'm doing here is working on the headboard, and these are the, the slats, if you want to call them that, or the, the main part of the headboard. And this is tongue and groove car siding. It's a one by eight tongue group car siding. I'm cutting all these at four feet and three inches so I can get exactly three of them out of a 10 foot board. Flipping around here now, these are the one by eight chunks of car siding that I just cut. And now it's time to go ahead and put all these together. What I do first here is glue all of this together. Um, the, the first thing I'm doing is just putting everything together here to make sure that it all fits so I can get a measurement. I did get all this together, take a measurement, and realize that this 1x8 car siding actually ends up being 7 inches wide, where a typical 1x8 board would be 7.5 inches. So it, it actually worked out better for me because I didn't have to rip anything down it came right out to 80 inches which is the width of my king bed i do turn my king bed um, so that it is the short way since i'm less than six foot tall i don't need the the length in the bed so i go ahead and take advantage of that width so i do turn the mattress so that makes me need 80 inches in width and this comes down to like 79 and a half so i did end up using a piece of cord around to cover that gap and uh, you'll see that in the future in this video as well. Moving on now to cut the 2x4s that the car siding attached to. These need to be exactly the width of your uh, box spring or mattress or however you're setting this up. Now it's time to actually glue all this car siding together. What I learned on the footboard is it's easier to do this from the other side. So flip everything upside down and then put glue on the tongue on the back side and then slide it into the groove. What I did here is I did it on the front side and did it in sections and put glue down into the groove, put it all together, ended up pushing it together. But as you see, I'm just gonna have to flip this over anyway in order to screw the car siding to the two by four. Now that I've got all these flipped over, it's time to line up the two by four at the bottom here, and then I will screw this car siding to the two by four. And what I do is I pre-drill a small hole through the back of the car siding and then just run one one and three quarter inch screw into every panel of car siding on uh, in a few spots I put two screws at the end You can kind of see what I was talking about here. Those two by fours end up being just a hair longer than the overall width of this car siding put together. So that's the gap that we cover with some cord around.
under the sanding. Now, this is the part that I dislike doing the most, but it is very important to get done. Throughout this whole project, I use two different types of sandpaper. I start out with 120 grit, uh, get everything down with that, get all the, the ink off these boards. And I swear, whoever stamped these boards, that was some fresh ink because this uh, ink was tough to get off of there. But I did get through it, and then after that, I came behind and hit everything with a uh, 220 grit. It is time to flip this over and get the 4x4s attached to it. I used a 5 foot chunk of uh, 4x4 for the headboard. You can kind of adjust that a little bit based on how tall you want your overall bed to be. And what I did is I, I flipped the main chunk of this headboard over and set it on top of a washer is what I used. I don't know, maybe three eighths of an inch thick, just so that it didn't put the four by four flush with the front of this main part of the headboard. And I, I just wanted it set off a little bit and that was the easiest thing to stick under there to do that. Of course, it was easier to sand down these four by fours before attaching it to the headboard. To attach the 4x4, all I did was drill a small pilot hole up through that 2x4 that's attached to the car siding, and then I ran a 2 and 3 quarter inch screw up through that, and that held the 4x4 in place. It will also be held in later with glue from that quarter round that's going to attach to the 4x4 into the car siding, and I did put a little bit of glue on the 4x4 that attaches to the 2x4 there. And on to the fun part here, it's time to apply the finish. This is a uh, stain and poly in one. I've never used this before. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I did run a tack cloth over all of this and hit it with the sander just a little bit before applying this anywhere that it looked like it needed it. And there we have it, the staining of the headboard is completely done. It took 12 to 24 hours of this sitting before I felt like it was completely dry and safe to go ahead and move inside. 
and then I move on to the footboard and the rails and uh, final assembly. Onto the footboard now where the process is basically the same as the headboard, starting out with cutting my car siding for the footboard. It, it's obviously quite a bit shorter than what we cut it at for the headboard. It ends up being right around two feet, maybe a little bit less than that. If I were to do this again, I probably would have made the footboard a little bit taller, but that's all totally personal preference. Once again, the 2x4s that attach to the car siding here are going to be the same length as they were on the last one, which ends up being right at 80 inches in my case. Like I said before, one of the things I did differently for the footboard is I put, I flipped everything so that the back side of the footboard was facing me and I just put glue on the tongue there and then uh, slid it into the groove right next to it. And I put my 2x4s underneath of this car siding before I started so I didn't have to try to get them under there once it was time for that. And then from here I do the same thing. I drill my pilot holes and run a one and three quarter inch screw through the back of these and that holds them uh, to the 2x4. When screwing these in, I did find out that being with this footboard being a little bit shorter, that 2x4 wanted to walk around on me a little bit towards the end. So in order to keep things lined up right, I just put a clamp on it down there on the end so that 2x4 couldn't move around at all, and that seemed to help a lot. Time to flip it over and start in on sanding once again. Same process here, 120 to knock down any ink that's there and anything that needs any special attention on these boards. When purchasing these boards, um, I'm very picky on what I get. I want something that's straight, something that doesn't have a whole lot of knots or you know cutouts in it or anything. So that helps a lot when you're picky up front. It makes this process go by much, much faster. On to cutting the 4x4s for the footboard. I did cut these at two feet. Like I said previously, I probably, you know, in if I were to do this again, I would have made them a little bit longer than I would have had to make my car siding a little bit longer as well. It, it turned out well, I just, I just would prefer it to be a tad bit longer. So sanding these down, uh, 120, then 220, doing the same method of putting a washer underneath of the 2x4 here before attaching the 4x4 and that holds it off a little bit from the front of the 4x4.
Here's where I attach that quarter round to the sides here. I don't think I showed that on the headboard, but it's it's the same exact procedures here. This is just normal, unfinished quarter round. So I just glue that, clamp it, let it sit for 30 to 45 minutes before unclamping, and then uh, sand it up a little bit, and then uh, this is ready for finish as well. Here I am cutting the rails that connect the headboard and footboard. My length of bed or mattress box spring is 76 inches, so that is what I am cutting these at. I'm getting everything prepped so I can uh, put finish on the footboard, the rails, and the top caps that go on both the headboard and footboard at the same time. As with everything else, these rails and top caps need sanded down as well, so I do that first before applying the final finish to everything. These are the 2x4s that the bed slats sit on that your mattress or box spring sit right onto. So I go ahead and attach these now with some 2 and 3 quarter inch screws. Jumping forward quite a bit here, as you can see, all I did was put finish on all that stuff and move it inside. So now I'm trying to figure out how to put all of this together as a one man operation. What I did is I measured up to the height where I wanted those rails at, put a clamp there and so I could set the rails on the clamp, and then attach the rails to the headboard and footboard. What I used was just some L brackets and attached the rails that way. You can kind of see it there. And basically three screws into the footboard, then three screws into the rail. And I ended up at the headboard, what I did was I cut those uh, L brackets in half. So they were basically just straight straps and that's how I attached them to the headboard. And then I also uh, just put a screw through that two by four that holds the slats into the four by four at, on the headboard side just to kind of give it some stability. And a few photos of the finished product here. As you can see, I just used two by fours as the slats to hold up my box frame. And you can also see that I screwed some two by fours into the middle of the slats downwards uh, instead of running a support beam down the middle. I've found this to be a lot easier. I do want to make one more note. I did actually install these rails incorrectly. The rails should actually line up with the inside of the 4x4. So the inside of the rail should line up with the inside of the 4x4. Mine ended up actually being a little bit too wide. So my box spring is actually smaller than the opening. One more quick note. As you can see, I did attach the 2x6 uh, top plate to the headboard and the footboard. I just attached this by running screws uh, through the back of each one of those pieces up into the board and that really caps everything off nicely. Thank you guys so much for watching and please leave any comments that you have down below. I will definitely be checking those and responding. Uh, like the video, share with friends, ask any questions that you might have. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the channel next time.